Hello everyone, welcome to another Friday new product post. I've only gotten the one product to talk about, but it's something very special. So let's take a look at it and see what we've got. So this is a new version of our sensor kit. The sensor kit is this box filled with all sorts of different sensors. We've got accelerometers, we've got gyros, we've got magnetometers, we've got flex sensors, all sorts of stuff, all packed into this one little kit. So if you're looking for sensors, check out the sensor kit. I'm gonna open this up and show you what each one does, kind of how each one interfaces, and just give you a brief overview of everything that's in this kit. So first up, we've got this little guy. This is the BMP85. The BMP85 is a barometric pressure sensor, and it has a simple I squared C interface. You can take this, hook it up to your microcontroller, and you can easily detect the barometric pressure. This is the HMC5883 L. This is a magnetometer breakout, and it has a very simple I squared C interface as well. And a magnetometer allows you to basically detect and determine your orientation. So it doesn't tell you really how you're moving, it just tells if you're pointing north, south, or east or west, or any different directions. And because this is a triple axis, it can tell you all three axes, so not just you know, north, south, east, west, but up, down, and all that stuff. Next up, we've got this guy, which is the ITG3200. This is a triple axis gyro. A gyroscope measures angular velocity. So whereas a magnetometer detects where you're positioned in 3D space, this detects your angular velocity in 3D space. It is a triple axis, so it can do all three axes, and it has a I squared C interface. Next up, we've got the ADXL 335. The ADXL 335 is a triple axis accelerometer. So whereas a gyroscope would say how fast you're turning, um, a magnetometer would be where you're pointing, the accelerometer would be how fast you're traveling in any of the three directions. And this has a simple analog interface as opposed to the digital interface of some of these others. So you have an X, a Y, a Z, a ground, and a voltage. Give it some voltage, connect up ground, and then you just simply read out the analog values of the X, Y, and the Z. From the data sheet, you can determine what the X, Y, and the Z values equal. So, you know, it has something like this many volts per whatever, and that can determine the speed that you're moving in each one of the three axes. And this is the IR receiver breakout. This is a very little guy, and it has an IR receiver right there on the top, and this allows you to basically receive and read infrared remote codes. Typically commands are sent at 38 kilohertz. Um, this will actually strip out that carrier frequency and actually just give you the pulses. So if you read this into your microcontroller, you can just see the remote code coming off of like remote control. So it makes it really easy to add this onto your microcontroller and add remote control to it. This is the HIH4030 humidity sensor. This has a very simple analog output, so just like the accelerometer, you basically just read the analog voltage out, translate that into a real world value, and you're ready to go. So this guy is a PIR motion sensor. This is something that you would see like in an alarm or something like that. When you turn this on, it takes a few seconds, and if everything is still, it kind of takes like a capture or a screenshot of the room, and if something moves, it basically triggers an alarm pin. This little guy is the LVEZ1. This is an ultrasonic rangefinder. It emits all these little pulses at the end, and when it bounces back, it reads them, and it can detect how far something is away. This one in particular has a very simple analog and an RS-232 interface, so you can talk to it either way, and it can detect objects pretty close to far away. So you'd use something like this for um, like a tape measure, or you could even use it as a distance sensor for a robot to detect how close it was getting to an object. This is a piezo element, and this particular one has a little um, weight on the end of it, and this is used to detect vibration. So when this moves, this flexing actually creates a current through the sensor, and then you can read that, and then you can determine how much is flexing or how much it's vibrating. So you could use this like on the table, and as I'm moving the table or you know, doing something like that, you could detect that type of movement. And with the mass on the end of it, it's real easy to get it to move. The new addition to this kit, the piezo element actually needs a one mega ohm resistor, and we've actually included a couple of those in this kit for you. So now you don't have to buy any additional resistors to use this kit. This is a reed switch. This is um, a switch that's enclosed in this little capsule, and you basically have these two plates like this, and when a magnet, also included in the kit, 
comes into contact with it like that. The two plates mash together and you get a connection. So you use this just like you would any normal switch except for pressing a button you actually have a magnet to come into contact with it. We've used this a couple times in new product post videos where we wanted some kind of touchless switch. Um, let's say you have a sealed box even and you need like kind of a backdoor access to it. You could enclose um, all your stuff in there and have a read switch and just by using a magnet on the outside you could activate some sort of switch. Here we have this little um, photo detector. It has an emitter and a detector built into one little package and what it does is it emits an infrared pulse and it has an infrared detector on it and so if I just have it like this it's really not going to be detecting its own infrared but as I get closer to it and I actually get my hand in front of it it will block the infrared and actually bounce it back onto the detector and I can detect that there's an object there. Um, these are really handy for detecting things very close. They don't have much resolution. You know, when you get like right there, they detect. But you can also use these as like um, a line follower or a black and white detection. So let's say you have a thing that's spinning and you're trying to figure out how quickly it's spinning. You can put a little disc on there that has little slices of black and white spin it in front of this and this can actually detect the transitions from black to white and if you find out how fast that's going you know how quickly the transitions are happening you can determine the RPM. Here we have the good old trusty flex sensor. You have just two little jacks here on the bottom and it basically just acts like a simple resistor that as you flex it its resistance changes. I think this was used in like the power glove so you know you can put it in the glove and you can like Flex your hand and it will detect the flexing that's going on in there. It has a lot of different uses. Um, we actually, I think, used this in the cat box video where we had it like inside the box like that. So when the box was open, it's reading this, and when the box is closed, it's pressed like that. And as soon as you open it, it knows it's open. Here is the good old classic photo cell. Um, the photo cell is a really simple way to detect the amount of light that is hitting the photo cell. You connect this in when light travels through space and hits the detector, um, it creates a small voltage. You read that small voltage into your microcontroller and you can easily detect how much light is going into it. Um, this is good for um, different kinds of um, day and night transitions, like let's say you had this inside the box, it's dark, now it's light, so you can detect if the box is open. Um, you can also use this for um, you know, like detecting the amount of ambient light in a room. You can tie this into another light source and you can have them disproportionate so that the less light this sees, the more light you turn on, things like that. Here we have the force sensitive resistor. Um, when you press on this, the amount of pressure that you put into it will change the resistance value. Um, I think this goes from like 100 grams up to 10 kilograms is about the uh, measuring range that it has. So if you press a little bit on it, the resistance will go up, and as you press more, it changes. And lastly, we've got the soft pot. Um, the soft pot is a potentiometer, but as you can see, it is just this um, thin, flexible piece of plastic. And the way the soft pot works is, as you press and move your finger along this little bar here, it changes its resistance. So instead of actually having a knob, you have this little thing that you press against. So there's a lot of um, interesting applications for this where you don't actually want a rotary pot, but you actually have something sliding across the top of it. And the last thing that's in this kit, which is a new addition to this kit, in addition to the one mega ohm resistors, is a baggie of 10K resistors. A lot of these sensors, like the read switch, um, the photo cell, and like the flex sensor and the um, forced resistive sensor need a 10K resistor if you're gonna use it with an Arduino or another microcontroller. So we went ahead and include a pack of 25 10K resistors. So there you have it. This is your Friday new product post. As always, we have more new products on the website. So go ahead and check out the rest of the Friday new product post for the rest of the new products that we have for this week. Hopefully this gives you a little bit better idea of the sensors included in the sensor kit. And, you know, go ahead and grab a couple of these. Grab all of them. Why not? They're very cool and very interesting and they have a lot of uses. See you next week.